And once again, we have a super exciting discovery of a black hole relatively close to the solar system that absolutely nobody expected. But before we talk about that, let's talk about history, starting with a very intriguing bet. Between the iconic Stephen Hawking, the iconic theoretical physicist you see right here, and the slightly less well-known but just as iconic Keith Thornton. And so back in 1975, they had a bet. A bet about an object that was really mysterious. It's known as Cygnus X1. An object that you can kind of see right here, an object super bright in X-rays. Here's actually a slightly better image by the Chandra X-ray Observatory. And so Keith Thorne believed that this was maybe a black hole. Yet Stephen Hawking bet against him, but actually hoping to be proven completely incorrect. And in early 90s, he conceded defeat because this turned out to be possibly a black hole after all. And so this turned out to be potentially the first ever black hole to be confirmed. An object discovered back in 1965 by one of these sounding rockets that accidentally discovered an unusually strong X-ray source. Basically one of the strongest X-ray sources in the entire night skies. And because of that initial discovery, and because of the need to study these objects a little bit more, eventually the researchers proposed the first ever space telescope. This was known as Uhuru, launched in 1970 specifically to study these X-ray sources. And it actually discovered at least 300 in the process. And many since then turned out to be possibly either neutron stars or black holes as well. But the reason I wanted to start with Cygnus X1 is because we know so much about it and because today it's also believed to be kind of extreme. In essence, it's what's known as an X-ray binary. It's a black hole and a relatively large star that sheds some of its mass, which then ends up around the black hole, forming the very powerful accretion disk and extremely powerful jets. And because it produces very specific emissions, over time it became possible to study everything about it. And so today we know that this is approximately 21.2 solar masses and cannot be anything but a black hole produced by a larger star. A star that was probably around 40 solar masses and that approximately 5 million years ago possibly collapsed into the black hole without actually going supernova. And the reason we believe it did not go supernova is because it seems to be in the same location. Normally during supernova, black holes shift because none of the supernova turn out to be perfect. They usually give black holes just a bit of a kick. And so in essence, this was the birth of X-ray astronomy and the first ever black hole to be discovered and confirmed. And here the distance between these two objects is approximately 0.2 AU, or about 20% the distance of Earth from the Sun. But it's always believed to be an extremely rare example of these X-ray binaries because the black hole here seemed to be a little bit too massive. In most cases, solar mass black holes are expected to be just a little bit less massive, possibly around 10 solar masses or even less. And so 21.2 solar masses was already kind of pushing it. It was essentially so bright because the black hole was just so massive. But on the other side of the equation, there were other propositions of even more massive black holes that we just are not seeing because they're not emitting any energy or because their partners are just too far away and so no accretion disk is formed and the black hole remains kind of quiet. And while to everyone's surprise, there's a new unusual discovery coming directly out of data from the Gaia telescope. The telescope that's actually really good at measuring speeds of different objects across the galaxy. The idea known as astrometry. And so here by focusing on various stars in the galaxy that seem to have deviations from their motion, usually involving some kind of an orbital change, the researchers discovered something really strange right here. This is a relatively large, relatively bright star located not so far from the Sun, roughly around 2000 light years away from us. And it's also in the galactic halo. And what's really intriguing about this star, as you probably guessed by now, is that it seems to orbit a relatively massive black hole. A black hole that potentially is approximately 33 solar masses at least. But because the star here takes approximately 11.6 years to orbit the black hole, it's not really close and it's not shedding any mass, not creating an accretion disk and the black hole remains quiet. But based on the analysis, it seems to be really massive. As you can see right here, more massive than Cygnus X1 and way more massive than the closest black hole to us, also discovered by Gaia, Gaia BH1. And I guess once again, what's really surprising here is the distance. This is one of the closest such black holes to us. Gaia BH1 is 1500 light years away, this is only 2000 light years away. In contrast, Cygnus X1 is 7000 light years away 
And once again, the only reason we've known about it is because it's so ridiculously bright and so ridiculously powerful. Yet this black hole, in theory, could produce something even more extreme, yet it stays quiet. And the only way it was discovered is by just seeing these minute deviations in orbit of the star that you see right here. But naturally, because this is a scientific study, we also have some additional discoveries in regards to all of this, including the location and why it matters. And so first, by using additional observations, including ultraviolet observations, and by using various large telescopes such as VLT, researchers were able to discover what sort of a star this is in order to figure out how this black hole became so large. And that's because generally we know that when you have a binary system, it's kind of assumed that these two objects very likely formed at the same time from the same stuff. And so by knowing what the star is made out of and what sort of a star it is, we can then make conclusions about the black hole. And so a thorough analysis of the star revealed that it seems to be metal poor. Or in other words, mostly contains hydrogen and helium and is not particularly developed elementally. And based on observations of other metal poor stars, we know that they generally don't actually lose as much mass as much more developed stars when it comes to stellar emissions. And so when they actually reach the point where they're about to go supernova or form into a black hole, they'll actually have a much higher initial mass compared to a much more developed star. And so in essence, the discovery of this binary system provides evidence for a hypothesis that links metal poor stars to extremely high mass black holes that seem to form without supernova through direct collapse. Here's one. And there are probably a bunch more still hiding that we're going to be discovering in the next few years. And mostly because Gaia is just so good at finding these white binaries. Or essentially binaries where something is orbiting something else, but something that can only become visible once the motion of the star is revealed to be somewhat unusual. Which is exactly what happened here. The motion of the star did not make sense unless it was orbiting something massive with a somewhat eccentric motion. And because this particular study was so good at finding this, it's quite likely that in the next couple of years, more and more data will be analyzed in a very similar way, revealing so many more of these hidden black holes all over the place. Once again, this one was actually really close to us. It was always there, we just never saw it. And once again, it does not seem to be in the galactic plane. It seems to belong to a different structure, such as possibly a stellar stream, like the one known as ED2. One of many, many stellar streams that exist around the Milky Way that essentially represent various leftovers from various collisions with other galaxies in the last few billions of years. And so in this case, this particular black hole and this binary system potentially belongs to a different ancient galaxy. Although since the black hole formed 5 million years ago, it was already part of the Milky Way when all of this happened. But exactly how all of this connects to the evolution of the Milky Way and exactly what this shows us about how things in the galaxy evolved is not something we can answer yet. Most of the recent discoveries of various streams are also a result of studies based on Gaia telescope and so it will probably take a few years and maybe like a decade to finally figure out what all of this means and how all of this played out over billions of years. But at least for now this is just a super exciting discovery. A discovery of an extremely unusual black hole very very close to us that was always there but nobody saw until now. And that by itself is super unexpected. And so we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or once something else is discovered about this or more black holes are discovered by Gaia in the vicinity of the solar system. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.